Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs and rabbits. And you're probably thinking, what is going on here, Kieran? Well, today's a slightly different video. I asked on my Instagram, Rummage Around Store. If you don't follow me, there'll be a link in the description below. But it's at Rummage Around Store. I asked you guys to send me in some questions that I will be answering on a YouTube video. Well, here we go. This is the video that I was on about. So we've got over 29 questions I've picked out that I want to sort of address. So without further ado, before we get into it, please do me one huge favour, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get in to the questions. I've got them on my phone. Let's get a wiggle on. So the first question, in fact, came from I Resell Stuff. He's asked me, what are your thoughts on Poshmark? Well, initially, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to sell to normal buyers because I think at the moment in time there is uh, resellers just buying off resellers got absolutely no qualms or any like objections to that whatsoever it's fair game like fair play resellers buying off resellers with their credit so it's perfect for them right it's perfect I was probably a little bit late to the Poshmark uh, so I don't really know too much about it. I do sell on Poshmark myself. I've sold a few things, but again, I've just sold them. I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys. I have just sold them to other resellers. I know Poshmark over in America is absolutely massive. So if we can even get 10% or even 1% of the Poshmark user base that you know that core from america into england it is going to be fantastic but at this moment in time it's in very very baby stage very you know one step at a time it's probably geared around getting more people on the platform so that's why they've targeted resellers perfect 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 place i've got nothing wrong with that at all but at this moment in time if you haven't got any sort of following it's probably not worth doing Second question coming in from Kyle. What was your first thing you bought that made you really want to become a reseller? Do you know what? It was very, very simple. My mum and dad, especially my dad, said if I want to make any money or I want to buy the new Xbox, I have to make it myself. So I've always had that way in my mind. I need to make money for myself and going forward. I think my dad asked, told me this when I was about 12. So I always thought I need I need this Xbox. I just had to have this Xbox. So really, since, since I was about 12, 14 years old, always resold. And the first thing I sold was probably an Xbox game or a PlayStation game or a Nintendo game. It's going to be something gaming related because at that time, that is all I knew. So to answer your question, Kyle, it must have been a PlayStation game or an Xbox game of some sort. Another wonderful question coming in from West Lanks Flip. Does it make it easier that your partner is a reseller too? Yes, it's as simple as that. Yes, it does in every shape, way and form. It's a real big help. She understands when the big, big opportunity comes. I need to take it. She probably jumps on board with that as well and spends half of it as well. She understands sometimes the living room, especially the living room, can get quite messy. She understands why. And the fact that she is a reseller is perfect. For me, my head, my relationship, everything is perfect. So, to answer your question, 100%. Billy James Cooks on Instagram came in with a whopping question. What's the best way to source on Vinted? Very, very simple. Set up your recent searches to be the searches that you want the products on. So, for example, if you want Nike trainers, have a, a search, save that search so you can always go back to it when you're looking to buy some stock off of Vinted. I have several brands, several categories, all saved up. And literally when I see a plus one, that means a new listing has come available. Click on it. If it's something I'm interested, I will buy. If not, I will just leave. But within them searches, you can actually sort it by newest first, and you can actually sort it by how much you're willing to spend. So I have a filter on, and it's literally a minimum of zero pound and a maximum of 10 pound on pretty much any search. That way, it gets rid of all the expensive stuff that I know is probably not enough meat on the bone to flip back on eBay. And it just leaves me with the, the bargains, the snipes. You've got to be quick on it now, though, because there's a lot more people going through Vinted to buy to resell on eBay. Me and my partner's probably been doing it for about a year. And uh, yeah, when we first started, there was no competition and it was beautiful. We can still find a lot of stock 
through Vinted. It's just like an online car boot and I absolutely flipping love it. We have another question coming in from Jill Hay. She asks, do you weigh every package you sell on eBay? And to be honest, no, no, I do not. A lot of my products are clothing or trainers and they will weigh, sort of weigh between zero to two kilograms. I will literally have two postage stuff. So basically zero to one kilos and one to two. But when you get to that one to two kilogram sort of bracket, it's very, very easy to, 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 to know because you know it's not gonna be zero to one. Basically, to answer your question, no, I don't. I just know after doing it for several hundred years of reselling. Original Fox comes in with a banger. What kickstarted your reselling career? Bish, bash, bosh. Like I said, it's probably my dad. My dad really did kickstart me. He told me from a very young age, if I want something, go and get it. But obviously you've got to pay for it. So it's always been installed in my head. If I ever want something, I have to earn it. So uh, found reselling because my dad used to resell maybe 20 years ago and uh, saw him do it. And yeah, I just took the plunge and I did it. Did it for like six, seven, eight years part time. And then I took the plunge to do it full time. And I tell you what, I would not look back because it is perfect for my and my lifestyle. We have a beautiful, beautiful question from JR Resales. What's your goals for next year? And what is your long term plans? So we're obviously halfway through the year now. So next year, I really want to grow Amazon even further. And I really want to start niching down on eBay and picking up some really high quality items. I don't know if I want to niche down into trainers and clothing solely just for eBay and then everything sort of in the uh, three to say 20 pound bracket goes on Amazon. Maybe that's the way I'll go, but I really want to grow the Amazon side of the business and keep eBay afloat. Like I love eBay, I'll never ever get rid of eBay, but Amazon has really, excuse the pun, but it has taken my reselling to the next level because you can just scale Amazon so much more. So I really want to grow that. And yeah, that's about it really. I, I think the main plan this year is got to be that, but towards the end of next year, sorry. And to answer your long-term plan, I kind of want a warehouse um, of some sort for Amazon and eBay and start employing people, especially on the Amazon side, because I think if I can really make that even more efficient than it is now, we could be talking about massive, massive growth. But there's, I'm a long way off that. And I've also got something in the back of my mind that I want to try but I've never ever done anything like it before and I'll save that for a future video. But if we can sort of crack that, then I'll be happy. The Tat Collector has, what has been your favorite pickup so far in the four years that you've been reselling full time? Well, I've had a few, I've had a few good ones, few favorite ones. My favorite pickup has got to be the big, big eBay buyouts that I do when I buy like big stores, uh, and you just learn new stuff because you, you buy the whole store at a decent price and you've got to take it all. I love them buys. But if you talk about individual items, I think the vintage Levi uh, wax coat that I got from my granddad, some of you will know that, uh, <laughs> some of you will know that joke, um, then that was a pretty good one. Flipped that for over 300 pounds. And I've recently just sold a, and to be, actually this has got to be my favorite. This has to be my favorite. It's got to be the Gorham uh, Rangers FC goalie shirt because that was a thing of beauty and it looked absolutely fire. You wouldn't believe it. Sold that for £325 and that owed me £2.50p, which from a local car boot. That is absolutely crazy. But the shirt was beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I just love the old 80s, 90s retro football shirts and that was a beaut. Tat Collector says, who is your favorite new YouTuber slash reseller? I don't really have a favorite. I know this is probably not the answer you guys are looking for, but I just think that we're all in the same boat. We're all here to help each other. We're one big community. I just enjoy watching resellers and I just love watching YouTube. My partner will vouch for the me here. I don't watch much TV at all, if any. Watch the odd movie here and there. I spend a lot of my time working slash 
watching YouTube videos. It could be vlog channels, travel channels. It could be reselling channels. It could be Arsenal channels. It could be football fantasy channels. I will sit there and watch a lot of football stuff and a lot of YouTube uh, reseller stuff. So I don't really have a favorite new channel. Um, Tat Collector, your new channel is brilliant. So absolutely love it. There's some really good, there's just loads of really good channels out there. I resell stuff. His channel's pretty, pretty new, pretty, pretty good to be fair. Better than, uh, to be honest, a lot of you guys probably produce better, <laughs> better videos than I do. So uh, yeah, but honestly, if you are a new reseller, a new YouTuber, just keep going, keep going. Don't let the numbers affect you. Just keep smashing it, keep consistent and uh, you'll uh, absolutely love it in the future. Um, I was very lucky at doing it when I started doing it during lockdown, where a lot of people couldn't do anything. So they just sat indoors, watched YouTube videos. So that's when I started my channel along with John, Luke, Ricky, James, and all that uh, amazing people. And we got very, very lucky at doing that. And um, yeah, there's a lot of new people coming through. So uh, just keep at it, keep smashing it, keep consistent, be unique, be yourself and just keep going. Don't let the numbers affect you. Um, I spent hours and days and days and weeks and weeks just worrying about the numbers. And it really, um, it does grind on you, but just don't do it. Just don't get yourself so obsessed with the numbers. Talking about John Luke, he sent in a wonderful question again. Do you miss your full-time job as a farmer? Any part of it? Um, yeah, I do. There's, there's bits and pieces I miss. I missed the communication with the, the lads on the farm. We had some cracking laughs. We had some cracking nights out. We had some cracking days, cracking, you know what I mean? Like I missed the interaction of people. Um, but in reality, that's probably all I do miss. I loved being outside. Um, it, I literally had a suntan, <laughs> I had a tan like tw every single day of the year because I was working outside. So I missed that, miss working outside, miss people, miss interacting with people, but People do say that reselling is quite a lonely job. It's a different job, right? Like I speak to people on a day-to-day -day basis through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and all that good stuff. And I feel like I have colleagues with me on a day-to-day -day basis. So really uh, it's not much different, but the human interaction is probably the most important thing that I miss working on the farm. Bearded Carp Puller comes in with a whopping question. If you could only sell one category uh, for the rest of your time on eBay, what would it be and why? And a simple answer would be trainers. Trainers, trainers, trainers. The reason why is I have an active interest apart from reselling, like reselling trainers on trainers itself. I like the new stuff. I like the new hype stuff. I've got a fair few trainers myself. I like to collect stuff. You know, I have, I just love trainers. So it makes sense for me to resell trainers because I know a lot about them. And that would probably be why and the category that I would only sell if I was forced to pick one category, it would have to be that. The master of pieces, the legend team mop comes in with a great question. Will there be a team rummage Premier League fantasy league set up this year? Last year, I did do one. Uh, I had like 250, 300 people in it, which was crazy to see. Uh, but this year, I'm not sure if I'm being honest. Let me know in the comment section below. Would you guys like me to set up a FLP, a fantasy Premier League team this year and we'll get it going if not i do believe the flip room uh, over on his instagram has one anyway so if you do want to join that then please do so if you want me to host one let me know retro jamie comes in with what is your favorite brand to source well my generic brand i see quite a lot and i do tend to pick up a lot is nike because obviously that's an easy brand to learn it's everywhere it's ready accessible it's easy to picture to pack to post and all that good stuff so and being what i sell the most trainers and clothing it's very very easy uh, that's probably my favorite brand i know it's quite a boring and generic brand but without these bread and butter brands you ain't gonna have a business because you need to rely on stuff like this it's it's massive so yes nike to answer your question and b comes in with a really good question here to be fair do you promote all your ebay listings yes simple answer is yes i promote at 2.1 percent 
And I think, if I'm being brutally honest, I think you have to in today's day and age because if you don't, you're just going to get left behind. And let's be real here, like 2.1% in the grand scheme of things isn't that much when it comes to eBay because you tend to get real big bargains at car boots and charity shops anyway, and you have a lot of wiggle room anyway. So if you're running your business on such a minimal percentage of 2.1%, if that 2.1% is going to cripple you and make it profitable or not profitable then you really need to look at what you are selling i genuinely genuinely believe 2.1 percent yes it sounds a lot but in the grand scheme of things it's nothing 2.1 percent you can now do two percent obviously i just do 2.1 because that's what i've always done since they bought the new rule in so 2.1 percent everything flat rate no more no less Dog Sleep comes in with a really interesting question, to be honest. And when I saw it, I was just like, yeah, this is a great, great question. What is more time consuming, charity shopping or Amazon FBA? Well, it's got to be black and white. It's got to be charity shopping is way more time consuming. Amazon FBA, if it's done right, is very, very time efficient. You can get a lot more done with your time with everything Amazon than you can with going charity shopping on eBay, right? If you have a Discord group, I'm not gonna, uh, shameless plug, I'm not gonna be, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed, shame, 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 shameless plug. But if you have a Discord group, which will provide you with leads and all you have to do is buy them leads online or go and find them in the retail shops, it's really, really time efficient. And this is what I stress the most about it. Time is money, your time. We have to start valuing our time when it comes to stuff like this. Time is not free, time is not forever. Time, time, time. And if you can find a Discord group and trust the Discord group and believe everything the Discord groups are saying, I'm not just the only group, I know I have my own group, but there's other groups out there and all these groups will provide you with everything that you need to know uh, and the leads, right? If you follow them leads, you'll go far. Trust me. If you do want to join my group, uh, Next Level Resale, the link will be in the description below and I can actually offer you £10 off your first month with the code NLR10. The link will be in the description below and we will start you from scratch and we will provide you leads throughout your reselling journey for as long as you're with us. We try and aim for five to 10 new leads daily. Like I said, if Amazon FBA is done correctly. It is way more time efficient than going charity shopping for eBay. Anyway, enough of that uh, shameless plug. Let's get back into the questions. We have another one from Dad Dog Sleeps with the outlay being higher on FBA. Do you use a separate pot to buy the stock? Uh, yes, I do, right? So at the moment, I run my business. I have a pot for eBay and a pot for Amazon. And I think eBay and Amazon are equally as important as each other. That being said, I think you can grow Amazon a lot quicker as a business than you can eBay. It's a lot more scalable. The outlay of uh, money is far greater on the Amazon FBA side, but you will sell that product that you buy originally a lot faster than you would with eBay. So your money comes back quicker on Amazon if you're buying the correct leads. That is mass, that's so important. You have to be buying the correct leads as much as you would have to be buying this, the correct stock for eBay. It's all about sales per month on Amazon. It's all about sell through rate on eBay. I use eBay still, and I will continuously use eBay uh, to fund my Amazon. So they both very, very, very comfortably complement each other. But yes, to answer your question properly, yes, I do have separate stock pots for each. <laughs> we got there eventually. And he comes back with another great question. Out of all the selling platforms you use, what is your top three? And will your top three change anytime soon or in the near future? My top three at this moment in time would be Amazon, eBay, and Vinted. Probably in that order as well. Amazon, scale it quicker. eBay, love buying used. I like used stuff. I go. I love going to the charity shops. I absolutely love going to the car booths. I love finding them holy grails. 
that you can find on eBay and flipping for mad return on investments. But I also like Amazon for the scalability. And then Vinted, I also really, really like at the moment because you can sell stuff that are slightly lower valuable stuff and they sell quickly on Vinted. So like your £10 trainers or below or your £10 clothing or below. You know what I'm saying? Like I use that for £10 items and below. I use at eBay because I just love going out for the, the hunt. I love it all. I love the grails that you can find and Amazon is the one that I want to scale because I think personally it's the most easiest one to scale and we can do that. We can absolutely smash it. I believe, we all believe, let's freaking go. Marvelous Man UK one. When are you getting them speaker gibbets for your Crocs? If you don't know guys, I'm a massive Croc lover. I love Crocs to bits. Gibbets on my Crocs. I've got a few pairs of Crocs and they've now just got some speakers which you can actually plug into your croc and you can listen to music which is freaking mental i love it it's going on my christmas list this year so hopefully if my mum dad or any of my brothers are watching this video i want them for christmas thank you he then comes on with another question choose one to keep and one to get rid of what would it be and why so i've got to keep one out of amazon and ebay and i've got to get rid of one now that that's a tough question if i had to keep one and get rid of one wow that is harder than it sounds absolutely love both of them for uh, obvious reasons and i've spoken and touched about it in the video but if i had to if my life was on the line i would have to get rid of amazon no ebay i'd get rid of ebay just because i feel like the scalability of amazon far greater if done properly than ebay you've got to be lucky when it comes to ebay you've got it there's a lot of luck involved you can't you know, not every time you go to a car boot, you're not going to hit. Every time you go to a charity shop, you're not going to get an absolute bowler. You know, you, 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 there's more chance of failing on eBay than there is with Amazon. We have another question. Do Amazon reduce the price of your items if kept it too long or do they send it back? Uh, no, they don't actually lower the prices. The pricing is all set down to you. So if you set the price at X amount, it will always be that price for as long as possible. What they do do, in fact, is they will start charging a little bit more fees if it's over six months, a year, two years. That's all they do. They just give you a little bit more fee on top of the sale price. But genuinely speaking, there isn't a product that I've had in Amazon that hasn't sold within a month. So uh, it's crazy. If you think about the people, the amount of people that use Amazon is unbelievable you've probably got a number in your head of the amount of people that uses amazon times that by 100 and that's probably the answer let's be fair what is the minimum profit per item that you aim for when sourcing so when it comes to amazon i look for 30 percent return on investment absolutely minimum when it comes to ebay it depends i want to at least double up on the higher valuable items so like if it's a hundred pound, I want to at least get 200 pound because after fees and postage, probably it's going to still profit at around about 70 pound. But generically, if I'm buying like an item for five pound, I'd like to look for 25 pound because once you've taken the original cost of price and the fees and the, and the tax and all that good stuff, you're left with about a about 15 ish pound there or thereabouts profit. Uh, so it completely depends on the price of the item. Amazon, minimum 30% return on investment. eBay is all to down with, it's all done dependent on prices. For me anyway, obviously you guys might have a completely different business model and that is absolutely fine as well. Like everybody is different. We all have different business models and that is the beauty of what we do as resellers. Biggest challenges as an everything reseller, processing, research, cleaning. Um, it's got to be the research, right? Because you want to make sure you've got the right product in your hand and you're researching the right product. There is so many products out there that are very, very similar. Take Yu-Gi-Oh cards, for example. Some Yu-Gi-Oh cards are exactly the same as others. One might be worth 20 quid, one might be worth a pound, but it depends on set. It depends if it's a hollow. It depends if it's got a gold square on the bottom or a silver square on the bottom. So the researching takes a lot of time and that is probably one of the biggest challenges when it comes to eBay is researching the correct product, making sure you have the identical product that is selling well on eBay compared to what you actually have could be completely different. 
Ding Dang Do 7 has come up with a, a question. Who is your biggest motivator? 100% my dad and my mum. My mum and dad have been there for me since day one and they have pushed me as far, like they have pushed me so much when I was younger and I will never ever take that for granted. Like love my parents to pieces and I think they are probably my biggest, biggest, biggest motivators today. Flip Room comes in with another Poshmark S questions. Thoughts on the long-term future of Poshmark? Will it have legs once the free credits run out? I have absolutely no idea. Um, I'd like to think so, and I think it should be able to, considering the marketing power it has behind it when it comes to the American side of things. So if they, like I said, if they only use 10% of that marketing power, then we could be in for a, a massive posh mark in the UK. If they don't, then it will struggle against with the likes of eBay and Amazon because they are still the two front runners in my eyes, closely followed by Vinted. Vinted has a hell of a lot of uh, backing. It has a hell of a lot of marketing. I'll tell you this, guys. When was the last time you ever saw a Depop advert? Never. I don't even think I've ever seen a Depop advert on YouTube, TV, movie. You know what I mean? I have never seen a Depop, a Depop advert anywhere. And look at the state of Depop at the moment. Depop is dying, dying, dying. It's probably dead at the moment at this time because you've got things like Vintage. You've got Poshmark coming through. You've got eBay. You've got Amazon. You've got all these other... Amazon and eBay still promote their service on youtube today like they are massive massive platforms and they're still advertising which is crazy when you think depop like i said when was depop last advertised i don't know i haven't got a clue if poshmark uses 10 percent, if just 10 percent of the marketing power that they use for the american side of things i think poshmark will have serious legs in the uk if it doesn't I just think it could struggle. Not saying it's going to fail or flop, because I think it won't, but uh, it could. Like, I speak to people outside of the reselling game, and I ask them, have you heard of Poshmark? And 99% of the people go, huh? What's Poshmark? So at this moment in time, they're probably advertising, advertising it to resellers, which is a good thing but they do need to advertise elsewhere because there's a lot of people in this country that still don't know what Poshmark is. And that is my worry. I hope I'm, I hope Poshmark does blow up in America and well, it is blown up in America, blows up in the, in the UK because it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful platform. Like it's really cool. It's different. It's slightly unique. You know what I mean? It's got all the, I love the live shows that people like Luxury Pickers are doing and Retro Jamie are doing and others. Like, I love that side of things, but hopefully it has legs. Any thoughts of becoming a limited company? Uh, yes, Flip Room, yes. I am thinking about going limited company. I've had a few accountancy meetings. Uh, so yeah, watch this space. There's some big changes coming in the future. 100%. But yes, I have thought about it and I'm going through the processes now and I've spoken to a couple of accountants about it. But yeah, limited company, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned. There's, there's some big changes coming. <laughs> we have a question from the one and only Becky Resells, my partner in crime. What is your favourite benefit from reselling and what is your least favourite thing? The most beneficial thing for me is it gives me the flexibility to travel. I'm sure most of you guys know that I love to travel. I love going to America and I love going abroad to beach holidays and all that good stuff. So if it wasn't the fact that I did this full time, I don't think I'd have as much opportunity to do so. So that is a huge, huge benefit. Uh, a bit of a negative though, what I find for myself is I'm constantly thinking about reselling and everything that to do with it. So obviously now I have NLR, I've got YouTube, I've got eBay, I've got Amazon, I've got a little bit of Vinted here and there. I will lay in my bed at like one o'clock at night and I'll be thinking to myself, what can I do better for next level resale? What can I do better for my next YouTube video? How can I list more? How can I get more stock for Amazon? Because they're four massive things for me at the moment. They're the four things I probably think about the most when laying in bed. So for me, 
the pressure. I love, love the pressure. Uh, but it's all, it also can be a negative, right? You're constantly thinking about it and you just need to smash it. So positive, I can fly wherever I want, whenever I want, however I want. A negative is I can never let my brain sleep. <laughs> and trust me, I've got a big head, so I've got a big brain, so I need that rest. And the last question comes from Berzorium if that's how you say I am sorry if I butchered your name, but that's what it says on Instagram. Should I make a lasagna with chili con carne in it? Yeah, yes, you should. Why not? And if you do, let me know on Instagram, send a picture to me and I'm sure to restore it because that sounds absolutely freaking mental. But it also sounds like that's diabetes on a plate, lasagna and chili con carne inside it. That's a lot of food, but I'm intrigued to know what that looks like. So if you do it, send us a photo and there we have it ladies and gentlemen so thank you guys for sending in the questions i hope i answered them questions to the best of my ability some of them were probably a lot longer winded than needed but it is what it is i can talk for england like this outro you probably just think and just get over with the video and move on so yes that's what i'm going to do so i'll see you beautiful lot in the next one Remember, guys, before you go, please do smash that like button and subscribe if you're new around here. And obviously, a lot of that was quite Amazon related. So if you were looking to join Amazon, uh, like I said, link will be in the description below. Use NLR10 for £10 off your first month and we'll go from there. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you beautiful lot in the next one. Bish, bash, bosh.